Hi everyone, welcome to Practicing Violin with Jennifer Clift. In this video, I'm going to show you a method that I use to help improve intonation and it really increases your knowledge of the fingerboard and an awareness of the intervals between the notes. In his great book, The Art of Practicing the Violin, Robert Jolet talks about the, the range of the violin, which he's, he points out that for, for practical purposes is about four and a half octaves or 54 semitones. Given that these different notes can be played in different places on the violin, so in different positions, that makes about a hundred spaces uh, where these different where these semitones can be played. So this is the chart which gives us a visual representation of all the semitones and where they can be found on the violin. Uh, so we have the scroll here and the four strings G, D, A and E, the fingerboard and then here's the bridge and all the notes that come in in all the different positions and I've penciled in the positions that you would get if you place the first finger on these different levels. It feels like an almost impossible task to re be able to go straight to any one of these hundreds, uh, hundred spaces and put the finger there so that the note is in tune. But I found that by hearing the note really clearly in your head just in advance of playing um, by giving as much mental information as possible so the name of the note the position the finger uh, where you're going to be playing it and by relaxing the hand your fingers will almost magically go into the right place so the method is to mentally see each note as if it was a target along the fingerboard. Then with the finger you point at the target, you shape the finger so it's aiming directly at, at the target, just as if it was a bow and arrow aiming for a target. And then when you're sure that it's pointing, then you place the finger. But this is going to avoid placing the finger wherever and adjusting because it's not in tune or even worse not adjusting and just playing out of tune and little by little your hand learns exactly how to shape each note and also in different positions where each note and the feel of the neck of the violin how it feels for each note on each string until you get a really profound knowledge of the fingerboard. So here's how it would work with a G minor harmonic scale, just one octave. First I would look at the notes and really get as much information as possible, so telling myself where each finger has to go. So looking at the notes of the G harmonic minor scale, one octave. The first note is an open string, a G. Then we have an A natural, so that would be what I would call a normal first finger on the G string. Then we have a B flat, so always paying careful attention to the key signature. So I would place that as a low second finger. Then a C natural, a third finger, one tone away from the B flat. Then I move to the D string, an open string, E flat, again because we have B flat and E flat in the key signature so this time I would be aiming backwards with my first finger aiming for that E flat. Between E flat and F sharp we have a distance of three semitones or a tone and a half so that's going to be quite a big stretch for the second finger and then a semitone to the G and then I come backwards in the same way. The E flat's already placed, so I'm just lifting my fingers. Here I would be opening my hand to go for the, the C natural, stepping backwards with the second finger or aiming backwards for that B flat. Right behind it is the A natural and then the open G. So I've set up the violin with little targets on the fingerboard 
so you can see where I'm going to play the notes in the in the G minor scale. Now the first step is I want to check that my hand is as rela relaxed as possible. So I'm going to stretch a couple of times, stretching the fingers and the thumb just a couple of times. And then I'm going to squeeze the thumb and the base of the first finger and release. And again, squeeze and release. So feel how it feels to have a very light, relaxed hold on the neck of the violin. Then I'm going to start the scale. So G, now aiming for the first finger, the A natural. I shape the finger in the air and then place. The next note is a B flat. I shape it to a low two. So not out, but close. The next finger, yes, I have to, to stretch out for that C natural. D. Now the E flat, I'm going to have to pull back and aim at that note backwards. Now, careful I don't do a shift backwards, I don't want to go into half position. I stay in first position and just pull backwards with the finger and aim for that E flat. Now we have an augmented second, so I'm going to stretch forward with that F sharp, with that second finger, sorry, for the F sharp. And a G right next to it. Coming down. Now I'm going to open my hand for that C natural. And now, careful I don't play a B natural, I'm going to aim for the B flat. Very typical to do this. Therefore, we're going to have an A natural, so it's just right behind. I aim right behind the first, the second finger with my first finger. And a zero. Using three blind mice as my second example, this is to show you how this targeting method is useful for walking down a scale or going backwards and it's especially difficult to tune tones going down on the violin. I think one of the reasons is that if you have a finger placed and have to play the fingers behind it we don't sort of see them in the same way as we see them when we're moving up a scale. So I would first target my third position, third finger, it's what I would call like a high third finger because it's a B natural, find that and then mm, aim backwards a tone away from the third finger down to that second finger A natural. This is a good moment to check that with the adjacent open string, the A string, and then the same thing uh, aiming backwards another tone to go down to that first finger G and again use the open G string to check the in intonation there. If your violin's in tune those will be very helpful. The end has similar kind of things. We start in third position, fourth finger on the A string, a G natural. The same note, then an F sharp, so half a tone behind or below this this note and working all and the way through so the I'm same way it begins. So for this B natural in third position, well first I'm going to find it in my ear so I'm going to play it in first position with a first finger on the A string. Then I will slide up the neck of the violin into third position, aim for a B natural which as I say is like a high three and then place. Now, I get it, uh, that was right, but imagine I get it a little bit flat, then I will slide up until I've matched the note that I heard in first position. I can recheck it, slide up, imagine how did it feel, what was the shape of the finger, how did my arm feel, and then aim and place. Now I've got my B. Now I'm thinking I'm going backwards a tone. So imagine there's a muddy puddle 
behind that finger, behind the three, and I'm going to step over the muddy puddle. So not through it, I want to step over. So again, aiming with the second finger, as if you're aiming with your foot over the puddle, and place it a tone behind. And then the same, oh, and check that with the A string, because that's an open A and it should match that A in third position. And the same with the first finger. Again, step backwards, aim with the finger, and fire. And that's a G, so we can check with the open G. Once we've, and now for the end part, we've got our B there, and so what we're going to do now is aim with the fourth finger on the adjacent string, so you can see that. So on the adjacent string, that was a little flat. Let's try it again. That's better. Again, I can use my open string to hear the overtones. And this goes now one. And then I put the third finger for that F sharp right behind the fourth finger. That can sometimes be a little awkward slipping it in. So you need to practice that a few times and then a tone back for the E natural, back to the F, so aim for the same space that you've just vacated, and a G here. And now I aim for the first finger. That's, an op that's a D, so I can check with the open string. And then we go on down, like the beginning, three, aim backwards, aim backwards. This is how I would use targeting for shifting. Take an, a very common shift from the first position to the third position and we're starting on the first finger and then moving up to the fourth finger. So I would probably target the first note, the F sharp, and the intermediate, if you like, note, so the A, which is first finger in third position, and then from there find my fourth finger, aim with that note, and to play the D natural. This is all on the E string. And then go back targeting one, moving up with the hand and targeting the D still in the air. So first I target my first finger, the F sharp, in first position. I play an E, and then target, and that normal one. Now my third finger to create that A. And now I'm going to slip up the neck of the violin, and exactly where I put the third finger, I'm going to now put the first finger. Just before I slide up, I can just try squeezing and releasing just to feel how it feels to, to be relaxed against the side of the neck. Check my thumbs not holding on tight, not hooked, and then I slide up the neck and target that A, first finger, A in third position. Now I want to find my fourth finger. Maybe I need to just walk up the scale, remembering that the notes are not so far apart as in first position. Sorry, and once again, third finger, and, and I can feel, how does it feel that block in my hand? Lift up all the fingers, target with the fourth finger, and place again. Back down I go, now I'm finding my F sharp again, and now I remember where I was targeting with the fourth finger and then I'm going to go straight to it. You can try that a few times. Remember how the neck of the violin feels, the shift, how far I had to come up, target and place. And then when I do it, I just do that in a, in a split second just before playing that note give you an idea of how this method could be used 
for more contemporary sounding music and music which has large jumps in the music and unexpected ones that are unexpected for the ear and not so easy for the hand so for example here I'm in first position I have a G natural and I'm going to jump up to fifth position an F sharp and placing that F sharp is really important to know exactly where you're going to go on the fingerboard then I would stretch backwards with my first finger and extension backwards because I'm staying in fifth position to play that G natural then an F natural so that's moved down from the F sharp all of these things if I can target them and know exactly how I'm going to shape my finger pointing at each note that's going to really help for making it sound correct and for playing accurately it also helps a lot for sight reading if you see a note and you know exactly where to hit it which we do automatically in the lower positions but we don't do so well in the upper positions all of these are really going to help us with our sight reading as well so the piazzola, I'm going to show you this with no stickers on my violin, but I'm going to have mental targets for each note. The first two bars are in first position, so relatively easy. I'm going to play, uh, target the F sharp, a normal one on E. Then target the C natural, which comes right next to it on the adjacent string. Back to a B natural. And the G on the adjacent string. C natural. Now I target a high two, G sharp, and next to that the three. Back again to the C natural and the B. Now I'm going to do like a cluster, so two and three are going to be close to find that A flat. And back to a C natural and a B and the G next door. So for this shift from the G to the high F sharp here in fifth position, um, there's my G. In order to get it in my ear, I'm going to play it in first position and then hear it in my ear an octave higher. Now I'm going up to where I think fifth position is and then I'm going to aim with my fourth finger and there I have it. Now if I don't, imagine I land here, well then I can slowly and carefully find it using that as a go using that as a guide and then feel it so feel what the shape of the hand is how my arm is um, what it feels like against the side of the violin which part of my hand is touching all this information and say to myself F sharp fourth finger fifth position then I can go back down and all that information there and as, repeat as many times as necessary. For the next note, the B natural, I'm staying in fifth position, but I'm going to extend backwards with my first finger, um, going back a whole tone. So I'm going to find that B first in my ear, down an octave, back up to my F. Now imagine it here, roll backwards, pretty good. If I haven't got it, you can do it on the fingerboard with a glissando, gently, and then remember, how did that feel? Now, the next note is in fifth position, a G natural. And then we have, an instead of an F sharp, no, we're on an F natural. So I think of aiming with a contracted finger instead of stretched out. Then, from the G we had before, we're going to go down a half step to the F sharp. All in fourth position, aim backwards with that three, an E, and now aim high with the third finger for that G, D sharp. Now where I've got my first finger, now I'm going to substitute and put my second finger in and now I'm in third position things getting easier up the scale C natural D now I'm aiming backwards really visualize how a, D, a G natural would be that was sharp 
So I'm going to have to stretch open more. That was better. Once again. E. And I've been careful not to shift back at all. Because I have now that C sharp, which is still in third position. And now I come down the scale, C sharp. Uh, contract that finger. That's a B, third finger in third position. And now I'm going to imagine a B in first position with that first finger to go back down. I hope you find this method useful. If you do, put a like down below and subscribe to my channel where you'll find other videos. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and at my website, jennifercliff.com. Thanks for watching.